scientific project is a massive endeavor that has included millions of people over thousands of years. Today we're going to meet two participants in this enormous project. The first is Michael Kondo, a student researcher at Wesleyan University, who over the past three years has been studying Alzheimer's disease in these labs. Her experiences studying the disease highlight the differences between private and student research. Alzheimer's disease is uh, one of the most um, disastrous disease for humankind. And, you know, it affects our lives and our society. But currently, we don't have any cures. And a lot of scientists are trying to find out the way to treat this disease. And one of the ways to find out the treatment is we study what is the cause of this disease. And I'm studying the causal agent of this Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease is caused by the structure change of the peptide. By changing the structure, they, they stick together and gradually making a larger deposit, um, insoluble, uh, insoluble like plague and that damage to neural cells. And eventually, you know, people lose the brain function. But we don't know how they change the structure. And if you can find the specific step, well, this step is the most important step to, you know, change the structure, we might be able to find a drug to block this, you know, structure change so that we can actually cure the disease. Her results showed us very clearly there's a model for how these peptides are associating together and the really neat thing about her results is they actually confirm the model. On the private level people don't necessarily publish their research um, because they are usually working to develop something that they want to patent or copyright. So it's not always the case that somebody who's working in the public domain like we are will know that much about what, um, for example, pharmaceutical companies are working on. Um, what I would say is what Maiko has done uh, with her work by confirming this model now gives people some ideas of regions to target to design drugs to disrupt the fiber formation. So they probably are, are already designing some drugs to target those areas. When it comes to um, the, the difference between academic research and uh, industrial research, um, as, as a medicinal chemist, when I make a molecule that's trying to fit into a particular uh, target site to cure the, the, the ailment that you have, uh, then very often, not, not exclusively, but very often, the work that's been done to originally uh, identify and really uh, explore and, uh, and map that particular target site, a lot of that oftentimes has been done in academia and industry really makes use of that. Um, at the same time, there are times, w examples where uh, industrial groups can discover something really quite new and put that out in the literature for the first time and everybody pays attention to that including academics and they, they glean from that. You have to refer a lot of papers and then see what other people are doing and then kind of take out bit by bit you know the protocol and then combine and then just modify it by yourself. So there is a little bit of a, um, a symbiotic relationship to some extent. Um, I, I think probably it's fair to say that industry takes from academia more than it contributes to academia, but it's the information flow really is very much two ways with that. We've seen the ways in which student and private research are similar. They use some of the same tools and techniques, read the same journals, and even work on similar projects. But in what ways are they different? It's really more about the question that we're asking. So the questions are different. What I'm trying to do is, as part of a team, be the first to arrive at the magic molecule that's going to cure what ails you. In contrast, at school, we can carry on the very basic research or fundamental research, which is very, very important for science, but with, they don't make much money. So that is the main, I think it's the main big difference. 
I think academic research is definitely much more more like a family at a, a private research place you're you're it's a factory and it's and your job is to output and you need to accomplish in order to earn profit whereas here we're really all in it together and and just and just going out of our own curiosity and passion and I think the end result of that is that it's just a much more informal comfortable and, and familial environment I mean like the lab is kind of ridiculous it's obviously a little bit messy and there, there's a flower and a graduated cylinder behind me and a statue of Ganesh on the fluorimeter and the way that, that things operate here we don't have deadlines other than our own motivation and we don't have measures of output other than than what we would want and that allows us I think to really create a lab situation which is fun and, and relaxing while at the same time productive. Wherever you study or work, you know, either it's private or in academic field, but we are all contributing in, you know, understanding of science and, you know, benefiting to the humankind. So I don't really, you know, separate, you know, you have to be in this field or doing this or anything. And, um, but I think the most important thing is we should enjoy, you know, like doing research. And I mean, you cannot really find anything if you don't enjoy it. You feel like so depressed, you know, oh my God, I don't want to do this one. So, um, you know, some people think, you know, payment is important. And I, I do think it's important. And, you know, everybody want to get paid better. Yeah. But if that's going to be the biggest purpose, you know, I don't think it's right. <laughs>